Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This week, we are really happy to have DJ Mutney here, um, a fellow Canadian from Vancouver who is the build engineer over at GitLab, um, which I don't think is in, in um, Victoria or it's not a Canadian company. It's, it's based in the States, but we're really happy to have other Canadians with us. And um, he's going to give us uh, how to code, test, and deploy with GitLab on OpenShift Talk today. Um, the way this, uh, this uh, briefing works is we give him the floor for 20, 30 minutes to do a talk and the demo and walk through the tutorial or whatever it is that he's got in store for us. And you can ask questions via the chat. Um, we'll try and answer them. The good ones we'll read out and have DJ um, talk to for the sake of the recording. Um, and then we'll open up the mics as well and let people ask questions and have a dialogue at the end. I also wanted to um, mention that on November 7th in Seattle, we're going to be in person with the OpenShift Commons. We're hosting the OpenShift Commons gathering. You can find out more details at commons.openshift.org slash gathering. And that's going to be an all day um, event with upstream project leaders, users, hosts, operators of OpenShift doing a lot of um, updates on some of the talks that they've given over the past two years through the briefings, as well as a good chance to network and meet all your peers and um, have time for all the special interest groups to gather and be together. So with that plug for this upcoming event, I will stop and let DJ take over the mic and um, give us an, some insights into GitLab on OpenShift. So thanks, DJ, for being here today. Thank you. Um, so uh, here at GitLab, we've been uh, working uh, together with uh, some of you at OpenShift on creating uh, a templated uh, deploy of GitLab in OpenShift for the past couple months. Uh, our target for this, this initial template, which is actually uh, releasing today with our release of uh, GitLab 8.12, is um, the, uh, the actual target is the OpenShift all-in-one VM as a, a developer environment. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be showing today, but I'm also going to be talking about installing it in um, OpenShift Origin uh, outside of the all-in-one VM and what, what the differences are in that case um, and, and kind of showing that, showing what the difference is. And uh, um, on top of showing what that template is today and that deploy is today. We're going to then, after we get that, what we have today deployed, we're going to get a little bit uh, um, hacky and uh, start adding in some additional components to show off um, some stuff that you definitely can do very, very legitly, but we're going to have a little bit more fun uh, today and uh, add in the CI uh, and um, uh, deployed component all in OpenShift here um, integrated with GitLab. Uh, so, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is DJ Mountney. I'm a build engineer at GitLab. And what build engineers at GitLab do is uh, we're in charge of, of packaging and configuration for the GitLab uh, product. Uh, so underneath there, I have a little description of the pipeline of what we do. And I think that's particularly uh, interesting to this talk as it'll make it clear, um, it'll make it clear uh, what it is uh, we're dealing with and what went, went into it for the, for the template. So um, even, even if you, uh, in, in terms of, of my job and the other people on my team, even if you abstracted away the GitLab product, we're basically taking um, some piece of, of source code, uh, bundling it up using a Chef software called Omnibus, which is gonna pull in um, its dependencies and, and package it up as, as DEBs and RPMs. Um, and then one of the things we're gonna do is distribute those DEBs and RPMs to uh, customers for install. Um, the other thing we do is we put them into cloud images like uh, Amazon AMI images and uh, put those in the, the Amazon store. Uh, we also build uh, from those same DEBs and RPMs or specifically from the DEB, we build a Docker image and push that to Docker Hub. And then from that official Docker image, um, we are creating uh, container deployment templates. Um, today we're talking about um, the OpenShift one. Uh, 
so that's that's kind of the the pipeline of of what we do. And uh, as you can see, as we go through we're, we're, and we're talking about this OpenShift template, it's built on top of this Docker image, which is built on top of our Omnibus uh, bundled deb, which is built on top of, which includes the source code and the other dependencies. Um, just really quickly, a little bit about GitLab. I'm not actually going to talk that much about GitLab, the product, other than what you see. And I'm not actually going to talk that much about GitLab, the company. Uh, if you have questions at the end about either one, be sure to ask me uh, for sure. But my my demo uh, is actually, because it's the only one VM, I'm running it on my laptop. And it's not going to be the fastest demo in the world. And so it's going to actually take up most of the time. So most of the slides that I have will just be um, uh, there for um, going over while we're waiting for some builds uh, to run. So about GitLab, um, it's an on-premises development collaboration tool uh, based on Git. Uh, so that's kind of its, its selling feature. We do have um, uh, free private repos in, in the cloud on gitlab.com, and we also do uh, uh, a service offering uh, on githost.io where you can uh, pay for your own private instances that we host and manage for you. Um, but pri primarily uh, what we are is this on-premise um, installation of um, source of a source control solution and collaboration uh, around your source control and your software development. So it's we're heavily based on Git, um, and then we we add in all the tools around it um, to help you uh, test and deploy and and iterate. It comes in two editions: uh, community, the free community edition, and the uh, enterprise edition, which is uh, paid licensing. The uh, community edition is open source and licensed under MIT. And uh, we release every month on the 22nd, which, hey, that's today. Um, uh, so a little bit about the template we're using today. So um, we're using the OpenShift template for GitLab, or maybe it's the GitLab template for OpenShift. Um, I'm not sure, but it's essentially, it's uh, an OpenShift template uh, that defines GitLab's uh, deployment configs. And it's located uh, here at this URL. Um, and it actually is there right now, um, but it's pointing at an older version, um, which includes more steps. But after this meeting, we're going, I'm going to be updating the template at that location to be uh, what we're using um, here today. Um, what I was waiting on is about half an hour before this meeting, we actually started pushing our tags live for 8.12. Uh, so I couldn't really update um, and point it at Docker images that didn't exist yet. Um, an easier way to find the uh, the template is to go to uh, Docker Hub, finding our GitLab official image, and in the description, there's a link to the Docker file, and this file, oh, this OpenShift template is a peer to our uh, Docker file. So I'm actually going to go there in a minute here. Um, but just uh, just a, my last slide before actually jumping into um, my screen sharing. What is this template? What is this template intended for? And why am I saying that we're releasing the template today? Well, it's because it works with um, GitLab 8.12. Uh, we've been working for the last uh, few months on uh, workaround issues we had with the persistent volumes and uh, our requirements for um, for things running as root. Um, and uh, so as of today in the 8.12, we have it working uh, out of the box in the all-in-one dev VM. Uh, so that's why we're saying it's released today, and it's dependent also on um, the OpenShift Origin 1.3.0 release, which was released a few days ago, or any alpha or RC of that. Um, it works fine on. Today, we'll be using RC1 uh, in my all-in-one dev VM, even though there has been a release of the, the new one already. Um, so I'll talk a little bit, once once we're into the demo a little bit, I'll talk about um, what's the differences uh, between what we're doing and what we have to do to set it up if you're not using the all-in-one VM. Uh, so just to jump over to Docker Hub to quickly point you guys at how you would actually find the image. You search for GitLab or GitLab CE or GitLab EE, we have these official um, images, Docker images. And uh, we have in the description of them, we have a link to the Docker file in our Omnibus repository, which the Omnibus was that piece that we use in the packaging. 
and you can see here it lives here uh, in this repository as a peer to our Docker file. So I just wanted to show that. Um, and this is my OpenShift origin all-in-one instance um, running on a local VM port, and it's running 130RC1. Um, I was priming some of the registry here, so I'll just remove this. Without this project, it's basically a, a, a clean install of the OpenShift origin. All I've done is uh, primed some of the uh, Docker Hub images into the registry to speed this demo along a little bit. Okay, so this is our OpenShift origin uh, instance. We're going to go ahead and uh, create a new project called GitLab. And we're going to create a new project for GitLab to put our template in um, in order to kind of isolate the, the service users uh, to this one space, um, which isn't necessary for the all-in-one VM, but we're going to, as we're going to show um, kind of how it would work outside of the all-in-one VM as well, we're going to go ahead and do it this way. Create, I want uh, new project we'll called GitLab. And um, We'll go ahead and, and talk about uh, what the differences here are between running GitLab in uh, the all-in-one and the, and the uh, regular OpenShift origin. So it, it basically, uh, for our purposes, it comes down to um, the security context, the default security context. So if we look at the any UID security context on OpenShift in the all-in-one VM, it includes this uh, system authenticated user. So every uh, authenticated uh, system user uh, to to the all-in-one VM has um, access uh, to the use any UID when, when deploying containers. Uh, in the case of the GitLab container, um, because we do rely on Omnibus, which is a Chef Solo server, and it does um, expect to be able to do things like chown, um, and chown is a root operation, uh, we do have to make sure that the GitLab user is able to uh, run as any UID. Um, in the all-in-one VM, this is already set up because of this line here. In the OpenShift origin, uh, outside of the all-in-one VM, you'd have to manually add a service account uh, SCC role um, to the NEU UID. I'm going to actually, even though I'm in the all-in-one VM image, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that line just to make it somewhat more like a, a regular install. Um, you, in, if you were just dis installing this in the all-in-one image, you wouldn't have to do this. Um, pretending that I'm a cluster admin on uh, a, a regular origin server, I'm going to go ahead and add um, the default GitLab project service account to the any UID um, security context. You do that. If we go back and we look at um, the security context and we scroll down, we'll see that um, it now has this user added. And that's that's basically what you would need to do um, to get it uh, working in um, a regular uh, uh, origin instance. Of course, you could, instead of using this default account, you could go in and change our template to use a, a defined service account and you could, um, or change, go into the deployment config after it's deployed. Uh, installed and uh, change it and uh, create your own service account to lock it down a little bit more but for the demo this will be how we're showing it okay so um those two changes i made uh um or the changes to this, the uh, security context i made you wouldn't have to normally do in the the all-in-one image what you do have to do right now is you actually have to add the template in to openshift so we're going to go ahead and add our um Template. So I've. This is a checkout of that uh, that Omnibus repo that I was showing you, and I'm going to add the OpenShift template. Go into the back in the UI. I'll go into the uh, 
increase the font here and we'll go into the GitLab project. We'll add the project and you can see we have the GitLab CE uh, application here. Um, so um, like I was mentioning before, we're targeting the all-in-one uh, VM for this first release. And this is kind of the first uh, release we're, we're considering supported. And uh, as a result, it's still missing a bunch of things. One of the things it's missing is uh, support for a GitLab EE image uh, at the moment. So that's currently not here. We just have the community edition. Um, if we click on it, we see um, it's going to include uh, three images or, or deployments. One of GitLab CE, which is going to be our main application that we can actually uh, increase the replicas on to scale. Um, and then we have a Redis and a Postgres image uh, that uh, you can only have one of in the current setup. Um, so uh, one of the other things is, as you can see, there's a bit of uh, config options here in the initial go. Um, the initial release, but there's, if you're familiar with GitLab, it's certainly not all of them, nowhere, nowhere close to all of them. Uh, so um, that's another thing we want to enhance going forward, but this is kind of the state of it at the moment. Um, so we, we're going to have to put in a host name because I'm using the own VM. I'm going to use um, the public DNS service for IPs um, and, and use this one. And I can just ignore the rest for now and go ahead and hit create. And we'll continue to overview. And uh, you can see it's created a deployment for the GitLab CE application, Postgres, Redis. It's going to boot them up. I, I primed some of the images for, um, um, for the GitLab CE for when it is pulling it in. Uh, so it won't take as long as it would. Normally, uh, normally it's pulling from from uh, Docker Hub. So, uh, depending on your connection and depending on how much load is on Docker Hub, it can take quite a bit of time, uh, which is why I, I kind of pre-primed it. If we jump into uh, monitoring, um, we can see already some uh, health probes failed. Uh, that'll be fine though. Um, they'll eventually everything will eventually come up and uh, be deployed. Um, I'll just walk through some of the, the settings in the UI or some of the, the objects in the UI that we've added in our template. So under storage, we're using persistent volume uh, claims. So we have one for um, Redis, one for Postgres. Uh, we have one for your GitLab data. So that's your Git repositories, um, your build artifacts from CI, and uh, your uh, user uploads for images and stuff like that on comments and stuff like that. So that's all stored there. And then we have the uh, GitLab CE ETC directory. So this is where the config file uh, lives. So there, we have a couple different ways you can configure this. Uh, so as you can see, you can configure a few of the options on the first uh, click to install screen. Um, another place you can configure is using our, our file system configuration file, which is located on this drive. So if you have access to uh, wherever this volume claim is, uh, is persisted, you could go in and, and change the etc GitLab, GitLab RB file to, to change your configuration and just do a redeploy, or you can go in and um, of course change it manually in your deployment uh, using environment variables. So we have this omnibus config environment variable that includes basically what's in, what you can put in that RB file um, at the moment. What's in here at the moment is actually uh, just the config necessary to move the uh, storage directories to those uh, persistent volumes and make use of the Redis and Postgres. The only other thing other than that is this password that we ignore, that I ignored to put in uh, and your actual external URL. Those are the only two things separate from kind of just moving directories around for um, this template. Um, as far as images, we have the GitLab CE image, which is pulling um, using our release candidate. Uh, later today, I'll switch it over to using our actual release. And uh, also um, a Redis image, which is using the official uh, Redis image on GitHub. And then the Postgres image is actually coming from OpenShift itself. It's using OpenShift's Postgres uh, image. Um, and there's not too much more to show in terms of um, objects created with the template. Um, we have our, our Redis and our Postgres already up and running. 
um, the GitLab C, the image should have been pulled and installed. And now what it's doing is probably populating the database. If we go into the logs, um, it's kind of running our reconfiguring and configuring a first time setup. Um, subsequent setups um, and installs will be faster than this. This first one takes a bit of time though. So while that's running, um, I'm going to jump back to my slides and kind of walk through um, what we just did. Not super exciting, but we created a new project. Um, we checked out the differences between the all-in-one VM and the uh, OpenShift origin in terms of what it means to GitLab at least. Um, and we, we added, um, in, in the case of using origin, we added uh, a security context in a UID so we could run as root. And we went ahead and added the template in. And this is the step that we're on. We created the, the project, specified the host name, and we're just waiting for it to set up and, and deploy. So it's now up and running, and it should be available. So we, we also attached a route um, to uh, just the, the CE deployment. Um, it's up and running, should be available at this URL for me, and it is. Um, before we uh, do too much, I'm going to go ahead and scale it to two, um, just to show that it can be scaled to two. I'm not going to really wait for it, though. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show off um, GitLab a little bit. Um, probably most, some of you at least have already seen it, uh, so this will be probably boring, but we're, we're doing a CI CD demo. So that's what you get. Um, uh, because I didn't specify root password uh, in the click to install section, um, I get to specify one now for the root user. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in as the root user. OK, welcome to GitLab. Um, I'm going to quickly walk through other config options. Uh, the root user is logged in as an admin user, so I can go to the admin area and go over to, oh, we can see the new, the new release is already available. Sweet. Anyways, we can go over to. Uh, the settings in the this is the admin area and go into settings and uh, this is where a bunch of the rest of our uh, um, settings are located that are stored in the database that you don't have to change on the file system or in environment variables so there's a bunch of additional settings in here um, that I won't really talk too much about just for fun we'll turn off oh we'll leave sign in we want sign up disabled so no one else can sign up for now. Not that it matters because it's just on my local machine. A bunch of different settings that don't require, because they're stored in the database, don't require you to change anything in uh, your uh, file system. So if we jump back to the project, um, we're going to go ahead and create a project in GitLab. Um, so normally your, your workflow would probably be to create uh, teams and, and user accounts and add teams and then uh, we call them groups actually instead of teams and um, create your projects in, in those groups. I'm just going to use the root uh, namespace for demo and um, we're just going to call it website. Um, so once you created it, you'd be able to, to push your, your get repo repository to, to GitLab. Um, I'm going to actually uh, pull in an existing repository. And I'm going to actually take, uh, in terms of website, I'm actually going to take the public source code for about.gitlab.com website, and we're going we're gonna to deploy that, our own version of that. Increase the font here. And we're going to make it public um, for the sake of um, the deploy step later on. We're going to keep this public. Um, you can set it up to uh, to check out using username and password as well, even in the deployment. Um, but for the demo, we're going to keep it simple. And plus, this website was already public. 
So it's going to go ahead and import um, the this repository is actually uh, like half a almost half a gig in in size. Uh, so in retrospect, when I was doing running through this demo a few times, I realized maybe it wasn't the best one to show because it's going to take a while. Like everything's going to take a while, unfortunately. Um, but that's what I ended up doing. Uh, so uh, once this import is done, we'll see a few more options, but we already see some features of GitLab. We see um, the activity, we see we have an activity feed. We have pipelines, which is the CR, integrated CI solution. Um, we have issue tracker, wiki, and snippets. Once this import is done, we're going to see our repository tab, which is our file browser, and also our merge request tab, which is the same as GitHub uh, pull requests, essentially, um, but for, for code viewing and uh, merging into your main lines. Um, so we're going to let this run, and effectively, like uh, this, this is this is the template that we've been working on, and this is GitLab, and this is GitLab running. Um, and oh, it, it finished already. It was actually faster than I thought. Maybe GitLab dot oh, got faster. Um, but um, uh, so th this is the. Uh, the template that we've been working on, and this is GitLab, and now we can we can clone and we can create merge requests and all this other stuff. Uh, but for today's demo, we're gonna now uh, jump jump away from just this template and 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 show um, kind of stuff that isn't available yet, um, but are just kind of like um, future aspirations and uh, things I'm excited about and things you can do. Um, already with uh, with Jenkins, for for example. So just to talk about um, how you would set up CI with Jenkins, I'm not actually going to set up CI with Jenkins. I'm going to set up CI with our own GitLab CI. But we'll talk, we'll jump back to the slides and talk about if you were to set up CI with Jenkins. Um, so this is the point that we're at, CI integration. Um, you would, uh, in, first you would install Jenkins. So it's actually, um, as as you guys all know, probably it's very easy to install here in OpenShift. Um, but uh, we also need for GitLab integration, we need the GitLab plugin, um, which is located here for Jenkins. Um, so you'd have to make sure that that plugin is enabled, and also the credentials plugin comes in pretty handy as well. So the, the kind of the general steps that we're not actually going to do, um, but that you would have to do uh, for Jenkins is you need to Install Jenkins, of course. You need to uh, create a new uh, GitLab user for Jenkins in GitLab because uh, you're going to use their, if, if you want to use private repositories instead of the public ones, you're going to use their username and password and the credentials plugin, and then also their private token for integrating with the plugin. You would uh, then um, set the GitLab server uh, host name and the Jenkins user's uh, private token in the Jenkins management page. In the Jenkins management page, there's an, after you add the GitLab plugin, there's a section for GitLab. Um, you would then, when you're building your Jenkins job, you would configure the GitLab plugin. It's now an, a build option in the, the Jenkins job. Um, and you would basically, you point it at your, uh, your repo using the, the Git URL, and you um, use the credential plugin to provide it with login if it's not a public repo. Um, and while you're setting up that uh, plugin, uh, it'll actually give you a callback URL to use in the GitLab webhooks section uh, of the product. So we're actually, what we will show from this is um, the parts that also relate to uh, CI. So CI kind of has the, the first step, we also need to install something, and then has the last step, we also need to set up um, uh, well, we don't actually need to set up the webhooks for CI, but we're going to set up web webhooks for the deployment part um, in the source to image, uh, which is what I'm going to be using for building and deploying in today's demo. Uh, so using GitLab CI. So GitLab CI, um, what is GitLab CI? It's it's a CI um, that's tightly integrated into GitLab. Um, it does. In addition, so it's the the API side of it is already in that GitLab Docker image that we loaded up. It was under that pipelines um, in the UI was under the pipelines tab in your project. It does require that you register these runners to execute the CI scripts. These runners are what we're going to load up in uh, OpenShift. 
our runners and the runner we're using today is our official Docker image for our GitLab CI runners. Um, runners also have support for managing Kubernetes pods, uh, and that Kubernetes support releases today with 8.12 and our new GitLab runner, uh, but we don't have an OpenShift template that works with it quite yet. I was working last night on trying to get one up, but I just couldn't get it up for the demo. So today, unfortunately, we're gonna do one um, that isn't using today's release, um, but instead we're gonna be using a Docker and Docker version of our uh, CI template using a very hacky template that I, I whipped up and we're gonna show it in OpenShift and it's it's totally a work in project uh work in progress i will push it up to our omnibus repo uh so you guys can take a look and, and laugh at me and uh and cringe at the horribleness of it but the the end result today will will work for our demo we won't be cringing we'll be saying thank you <laughs> it's 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 really yeah it's it it kind of shows definitely what i think everyone wants to have happen with with the GitLab CI, or if we want GitLab CI in OpenShift, that'd be really awesome. And with the Kubernetes support, we're we're gonna get it there. Um, it just today isn't today specifically isn't the day, unfortunately. When you it, get... it might it, it might be the day for somebody because the the support is there. It's just uh, not the day for me. <laughs> when you get there, we'll do a blog post about it and let everybody know. So. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I'm going to jump back to. Um, uh, jump back to my website and we're going to set up CI. So because I did a clone of, um, this was a clone from GitLab um, and this is our actual website. It actually already has a CI configuration. Uh, so we're just going to click on that link and this is our GitLab CI YAML file. Um, we're not going to use all this today um, because we're going to leave the build and the deploy up to the source to image stuff. Um, so we're really only going to do the linter in terms of CI. Um, our CI YAMLs include a uh, Docker image. Uh, so this looks like a big, scary Docker image. Um, I actually have it open over here. So this is the Docker file for that image. It's actually just a Ruby uh, 2.3 Slim um, that is installing a couple packages and then cleaning up after them uh, and then setting the encoding environment uh, in terms of uh, UTF encoding. Um, and the reason we have this in an image, of course, is to so these steps don't have to happen during the uh, DI um, run so that they've already been done and they're already in an image that can just be pulled down and cached. Um, so I'm going to close that. And uh, this is our official website. I'm going to close that. And this is my deploy. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this file. We're in master right now. I'm just going to drop out um, the deploy step. Make that gone. I'm going to drop the build step. I'm going to drop this tag because we're only going to set up one CI runner. This tag lets you determine which uh, runners it's going to run on. So this one's specific to a, make sure you run on a Docker runner. Um, we're not going to tag our runners today, so we're going to drop the tag. Uh, we're going to leave the stage build, but we're going to actually drop this. Uh, Build. So this is this is going to be the template we use today. Uh, we're going to include the cache because after the first uh, run, it's going to make um, our subsequent runs uh, a lot faster because it's going to basically cache the the Ruby gems and allow us to just be running this command on each uh, test run, unless we change the gems. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And um, go on over to the main project page again, and we can see there's a pending build for our new commit. And um, it's pending because there's uh, the build is stuck, check runners. Well, if we go over, this is the project settings over here. Um, if we go over to runners, we can see that it, it tells us how to set up a new runner, um, but we don't actually have any runners currently. So we're going to add, uh, add some runners, we're gonna add them to OpenShift. So jump back over to our uh, command line. And so we're going to use uh, my hacky template. Um, my hacky template is using Docker and Docker. And as a result, uh, I'm going to have to throw uh, run the, the container in privilege mode. And uh, just to get it uh, easily set up, I am actually using a service account that already exists and that's the deployer service account and then adding that service account um, to uh, the privileged uh, security context. So let's go ahead and 
uh, added to the privilege security complex, uh, context. So it's the employer account. I spelled that all night. Okay. So we've added the service account to where it needs to be to run a, a privileged container. So like I, like I said, the, the part of the demo where we actually showed what we're le releasing today and supported is, is, is done. We showed GitLab. Now we're showing uh, the hacky stuff um, that I just, I didn't want to set up Jenkins. So I instead set up GitLab CI. Um, so we're going to create uh, from new file and I have it uh, called my CI template. So if we go back into our GitLab project and we're going to add it to the project, I now have a GitLab runner. Um, it needs access to um, the GitLab instance. Um, I We have ours uh, using that the public DNS name server. Uh, I don't want to overload that uh, name server with requests from my machine. So I'm actually, being that this is deployed in the cluster, I'm going to go ahead and use um, Uh, the clusters DNS name for it. So it was in the GitLab project, service, cluster, local cluster. Oh, and it's the slash CI. The slash CI, if, you, if we go over to the runners page, we can see it was slash CI for uh, communicating. And then we need a CI token, registration token, and that's this guy right here. I'm going to copy him over. And then I have uh, volume sizes for bill volumes and cash volumes. Go ahead and create that. And it'll create a new um, runner and boot it up. And because I had, this was another image I had preceded, I uh, booted up pretty quick. And if we look in it, um, it already registered the runner, which we can, if we go back to our runners page and we refresh, we can see it's registered the runner. And it's already grabbed that first build that we ran. Um, so we can go over to our, our pipelines. We can see our build is now running. We click in it. We can go into the specific lint build and we can see its current status. So this first run is going to be, um, it's going to take a little while because uh, it's going to have to pull it in this uh, registry image, which isn't going to actually be the bulk of the time. Uh, it's going to spend bulk of the time doing the bundle install, uh, but this is going to cache those. And so our, our next builds are going to be a lot faster in terms of uh, CI. Um, so while that's running, um, this is this is kind of so far we've kind of followed a, a nice a nice flow, but now things are getting a little bit slow. We're going to start jumping all over the place. So hopefully after I finish jumping all over the place in the demo, I can quickly run through the slides to kind of put it back in order for you. And and I apologize, uh, but while this is running, we're going to go ahead and um, set up what uh, the deploy would look like on the um, OpenShift side. So we're going to use the source to image uh, stuff. So we're going to um, copy the uh, git URL for the website project. I'm going to go back to our console. Because we uh, used, we're using the NEUID privileges for um, this instance and we're pre pretending it's not an all-in-one VM, we're going to go ahead and create a new project so that our, um, our website deployment isn't getting any of that enhanced um, privileges. Um, and our website is using Ruby, so we're going to use the Ruby 2.3 builder that already comes with uh, OpenShift. I'm just going to call it website. Uh, once again, because this is in the cluster, we're not going to quite use the URL um, that it gave us because I'm using the, the public domain name server provided by uh, Bootcamp. Um, so instead, I'm going to use this one, um, which is our uh, one for uh, our cluster domain name for this one. I'm going to go ahead and show advanced. We're going to make sure it only deploys the master branch. Um, 
we're going to create a route for the application called website and we're going to put it on the public uh, DNS. And we're going to make sure that we are configuring um, build triggers. And other than that, I'm going to keep this um, the same and go ahead and hit create. So uh, when you hit create, it shows you the nice um, build trigger, webhook trigger URL for uh, GitHub. Um, for GitLab, we need to use the generic trigger, um, but the only differences are these last two sections, this secret and the uh, last path. So we're going to go ahead and copy it. We're going to go back to uh, to GitLab, which is still running that build. Uh, we're going to we're in the project and we're going to set up uh, webhooks for this project. So we're going to enter the URL. Um, and we need to basically replace the secret and this last uh, last path here. So um, one way I've found to find it from the UI, of course, you could find it just by dumping the uh, the build object on, um, on the command line. But if we go over uh, into the UI, uh, we can see there's this build running for websites, and then there's a deployment called website as well. Um, but we're going to go in and look at the edit for the build. And we see it does have a generic webhook set up here. Um, and it ha does have a different secret. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. If we didn't hear, and we're only going to trigger this on build events. We don't have to specify a secret token because it's already there's already one included in the URL. And we're going to disable SSL, SSL verification because I'm using a self-signed certificate. And normally in a real setup, you would also hit test at this point, but that would trigger uh, an extra build. So I'm just going to assume it works. And we're going to see later when we start making changes uh, whether it works or not. Um, so we're going to go back here. Uh, it's currently building our website, installing um, the bundle. It's checked it out. It's synced it. It's going to spend some time installing. This is going to take a while. Um, the one thing we do have to change specifically for our website, um, the uh, deployment that got automatically set up here isn't quite enough to get ours, uh, our, our particular website working. It's very close, though. Um, the only thing it's missing is uh, an, some environment variables to uh, get it into uh, English UTF-8 encoding. Um, I just have a copy of the environment variables here. That'll get it going. So before it even gets to the point of running this, let me go ahead and edit it. So that when it builds, when it deploys, it'll it'll go live. So it's still running that first build. Um, if we go back to the GitLab project, uh, we're still running our CI test. Sorry, my machine isn't the fastest thing in the world. We'll just check to see how far it's gotten. Oh, not very far at all. That's unfortunate. It's running extra slow. We're going to go ahead and blaze ahead to, uh, um, because this is just the build for the master branch, we're going to go ahead and show the change, uh, show what happens when we do a change. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, open a new terminal and clone this on the command line, and we're going to start a new um, merge request. So even though it's like almost half a gig inside locally, uh, 
I'm local, so it's not going to take too long to clone. While you're doing that, there was one question um, so far. Um, how do you handle the persistent storage when you scale up GitLab? You want to save that till later, or you want to? Yeah, I can answer it now. So the persistent storage, when you scale up, so um, it uses the same persistent storage. So we specifically um, separated the storage out so that uh, essentially the instance-based uh, config files in terms of that's in terms of what happens when it first when an instance first boots up and configures its nginx and um, its unicorn workers and the rest of the things to run the application those are not persisted but things like the git repos were persisted and things like the um, uh, your build artifacts and your uploads and stuff like that were persisted so when you increase the uh, um, the instances, it ends up pointing at just the same um, file storage for your repos and your builds, uh, but uses, other than that, it doesn't persist the rest of the instances running like PIDs or uh, anything like that. Um, so it basically just ends up bringing up multiple of the Rails application, all pointing at the same um, uh, NFS Git repositories or however you set up your persistent storage. Um, and so you can you can scale those application servers up. Uh, we we kind of do the same thing except outside of OpenShift at, on uh, GitLab.com. We have kind of like 20 um, of these GitLab application servers that are running that are just all attached to um, the same storage or or the same storage provider. And um, uh, then we have our our database and our Redis uh, separate. Uh, as well, so it's set up. It's designed to work the same way uh, in OpenShift. Even though, even though right now the target is the all-in-one VM, we we were kind of wanting the data to be uh, set in a way that would be the same as what we want in the future, so we can uh, keep upgrading it without having to shift things around. So, finish cloning. I'm going to jump into the website. I'm going to. I'll install it so I can use it locally. Um, we'll jump back to our to our instance to see where it is. Just kind of check up on the status of things. So in our CI instance, we're still checking out and installing gems as well. Um, luckily for the CI build, all of these guys will be cached, so our next build won't have to, to use them or won't have to re-build uh, them. Unfortunately, I didn't spend too much time monkeying with the source image stuff, so the, uh, the build on this side um, will have to. You've just given away one of our demo tricks is to always do it first. These ones are oh. very cached. <laughs> So I'm gonna probably on my command line is managed. I already had these bundled on my command line as well. So we're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> add a new. So this is this is our this project is our GitLab website, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add a new blog post to it, which we have a a rig task for. Um, when I was doing this demo before, I usually had done the clone before I had changed the GitLab CI image. So I kept on pushing this new branch up and it not running CI. So this time I did it properly and it uh, psyched me out. <clears throat> so we're going to create a new post. We're going to edit the post.
I'm not going to take anything too fancy. I'm just going to push it up here and uh, be done with the file system part of it. Um, so it's going to push up a new branch. Uh, so this is our initial master uh, run of uh, the CI, which uh, completed successfully. Um, we're going to go back to the command line, and once it pushes it up, it's going to actually give me a link for creating a merge request, which I'm going to use. You could also create it through the UI and find it um, notification for creating it. So I'm going to submit that as a new merge request. I think we see uh, CI build is already running for it. Um, we can see our changes and, and comment on them and get them reviewed. Uh, so we can view the details for the running build. My poor, my poor computer is a little slow. So while you're you're waiting for that, um, I'm going to ask another question. Um, so one of the folks on the call has just asked, um, why do you keep saying this is targeting the all-in-one? As he understands, you if NFS storage or any other concurrent read-write file system provider is available, what would prevent it from running on any origin or OpenShift enterprise cluster on-prem or on cloud? Yeah, so it's it's more just uh, an excuse to say why some of the config is missing. Um, so certainly, like this is this is an actual install of of GitLab using our official image. So if you do go into the file system and you edit the config, or you go in and you want to edit your deployment config, or you want to add things built on top of our template, it's it's totally all there and ready, and and that's fine. It's more just like explaining what's missing from the template. Um, so the the build itself, the way it runs, that's that's fine. It's 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 fine. You do have to be a cluster admin to add the the NEUID to um to the build um but as long as you can do that it will run in um in uh openshift origin um so it's it's really just uh excuse for um why the template is itself is so lacking in, in configuration okay. at the moment that's all right we'll get we'll get it up there um so it's also um, might be worth sharing um, what the process was that you went through for working with Red Hat to get this working and, and who you worked with and um, how, how that was. So like, I know you've had a lot of interactions with Red Hats and so, you know, other Thomas members. So what was your, what was the process like to get all this? Yeah, so uh, essentially um, we started with the all-in-one VM as well. It seemed like there was, um, that was kind of the initial uh, desire was let's see it working in the all in one VM and then move on to the other stuff. Uh, so we worked with um, <clears throat> uh, Steve and uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name. It's either Ori or George. I'm not sure. Or, um, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> uh, we've been working with them. Uh, Ori uh, essentially created the initial template for us um, and then we've been uh, modifying it and then. Uh, he, he created an initial basic template uh, based on um, our image, uh, and then we've been modifying it and getting him to review it um, and provide feedback on it. So it's been a back and forth uh, in terms of that. And that's, that's basically how it's been so far. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this merge, uh, merge request. Uh, it'll merge into master. It'll kick off additional builds. Um, and hopefully at least maybe even the first build will have finished in uh, OpenShift. 
we go look at this was the first build oh it didn't even finish yet <laughs> that's okay we'll just what we'll do is we'll we'll only show the end output of the first build and you can just imagine the the other ones you're good at imagining things when live demos are going on so yeah you're coming up on the end of an hour so I just want to, that's why I've been poking these questions in. If other people have questions, type them into the chat and um, continue on, DJ. Yeah, sure. I'll just jump back to my, my slides. Um, <clears throat> so we did, we're doing the deploy in this demo using the sourced image. Um, so we created the OpenShift app. Um, we created a, a Ruby app for, um, for our website and pulled from our GitLab repository. We enabled the generic Git trigger, and we we plugged that trigger into GitLab's webhooks. <clears throat> so kind of like, what's next for the integration? We need docs, uh, so definitely need to get the docs up there. Um, one thing also is get SSH support. Right now, you would have saw me only cloning over HTTP. Um, we need to expose the SSH port uh, externally. Uh, I understand there's a change to the, uh, the public uh, router that went into uh, to OpenShift that will allow us to do that. We just haven't made use of it yet. Um, that's a funny way to spell expose, but uh, expose more of the config options. Uh, specifically, uh, email is one that's missing from the um, from that one-click installer, uh, adding SMTP. Uh, we want to add the GitLab EE images. Um, we want to build a template around our, our Kubernetes uh, CI runner. So we our, our Kubernetes, um, we have documentation already on, on using Kubernetes and setting up our runners um, uh, to use it and setting up as a, a privileged um, runner, uh, but they don't currently uh, work out of, like this template itself doesn't work out of the box if you just plug it into OpenShift. So we need to, to do some investigation on getting that working. Um, it would be fun to do deployments from the runner uh, and uh, a clearly defined backup restore procedure. Right now, you can because it's the same um, install as as everything else. You can go into those uh, container images and run the backups, um, and the backups are stored onto that persisted um, storage. Um, but you actually have to like uh, go into the terminal onto the machine to to manage that stuff. Uh, and then we also, GitLab has an integrated container registry that we have disabled right now. I have a question mark after this one because it's likely not needed because often you're going to have a container registry already in uh, OpenShift, but uh, just threw it in there because I'm not sure if there, maybe there's a use case for it in OpenShift uh, with GitLab or maybe there's not. Um, so just to jump back to our push was successful, we'll jump back to overview. Um, our website is up, it's running um, more builds, basically for each push I did um, and, and the merge itself. We're going <clears> to <throat> ignore those builds um, and just look at the website, the pretty website, and see that, yes, it, it did deploy. And we'll just and buy deploy a again. bigger machine next time and a real cluster. Yeah. And do it live. Yeah, actually, I actually I, I have a, a cluster set up, but it's it's not on uh, one three, and I uh, I wanted to show one three instead of showing all the extra steps that you would have to do to get it working on the older cluster, and I didn't have time to up upgrade my cluster unfortunately. But because the the website releases, running. Yeah, releases happen, so you know things happen, and you know, it's it's been great. So this is a wonderful overview, and lots of detail. Okay, so that's, I'm, I'm sorry it was so slow. That was it um, for the demo. If we can fit in any other questions, let's put up, do it. Put up your last Q&A slide and, or your, last, your final slide and we'll, we'll do that. Um, I'm actually not seeing any questions. I've, Jorge has joined us, the, the gentleman from Red Hat who gave you a hand on some of that. I've unmuted him to see if he has any other things to add in. Um, but if you could also tell people how to get a hold of you, DJ, or, or where the right place is to um, reach out at GitLab, um, if people want more information, that would be a great thing too. 
Yeah, so my email is uh, dj at gitlab.com. Um, and the, the repository that I monitor uh, is the Omnibus repository. Uh, so if you uh, have any issues with the template, um, we do have an tr issue tracker on the Omnibus repository, which was uh, linked to at the beginning of the slides and linked to from our um, Docker image on Docker Hub. Uh, so any issues you have, uh, feel free to uh, put there. Jorge, do you have anything to add to that? No. I mean, it's been a, work, a great experience working with uh, GitLab guys. And I hope that people start using more GitLab and the, the template that they are creating and the technology that they are, they are doing, which is great. And they help us make it better. All right. Well, I can see uh, a number of participants on the uh, other Commons members who are on the, the call here. So I'm guessing that there'll be um, a lot more use of GitLabs after this um, demo. And we will be posting the recording of this, and I will make DJ send me his slides um, as well so that you don't have to type in everything that he was typing in and you can steal from that. Um, and that should be up in a day or two on the blog.openshift.com site and on um, the OpenShift YouTube channel. Um, and please um, also, if you have questions, post them on the OpenShift Commons mailing list and um, we'll get DJ um, to answer them there so everybody can see them. Um, and we will be back again next week um, with another OpenShift Commons briefing. And again, I, I will do a, a slight pitch for um, if you're up for doing the Commons briefings in person, um, November 7th, we'll all be gathering in Seattle at the OpenShift Commons gathering. You can register today. Um, it is uh, a prequel to KubeCon and Cloud CloudNativeCon, co-located at the Seattle Sheraton. Um, and the address to find that is commons.openshift.org slash gatherings. And um, if you like what you've seen in the briefings, you'll love seeing everybody in person and getting to drink a beer or have lunch with them and um, pepper them with questions too. So um, we're hoping DJ and some of the GitLab folks will be there and we'll get your questions answered there in person. So once again, thank you for joining us at this OpenShift Commons briefing. And thanks, DJ, for doing such an awesome job showing off OpenShift and working with us on getting this integration up and running.